Well, welcome back. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS in Bronxnet. And our next guest is the Director of Interventional Cardiology and Structural Heart Interventions with Montefiore. And he joins us with this fantastic program to speak about the American Heart Month and the importance of prioritizing healthy hearts and healthy eating and healthy living and all of that kind of stuff there. So please welcome to the show, Dr. Muhammad Azim Latif. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me. Um, great to join you. Doctor, tell us what made you choose interventional, interventional cardiology? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, it, I think it goes back to, um, and with most things in life, there's often a personal experience behind it. So my dad had really bad coronary artery disease, uh, and I was still quite young at that stage, was just as I was in med school. And I remember him suffering through it, getting heart attacks um, and not having a minimally invasive way for him to be treated. And that really moved me because I saw him get these heart attacks and not being, and there was no ability for him to be helped. So I then early on decided I wanted to do cardiology uh, to help people with heart disease, but really the interventional cardiology is the most exciting part because we make people better really quickly and we do it in a, in a minimally invasive way right which means someone comes to me having a heart attack okay i can go into that patient's wrist go up to their heart and unblock the artery and they immediately feeling better yeah and you do this with you unblock it with stints or drugs or yeah so i i unblock it mechanically so i'll go up with wires and balloons and stents and the artery that has no blood flow will open it up within a matter of minutes. And suddenly there's blood flow again and the heart's moving again and we stop the heart attack. Wow. That's great. And I, you know, of course there's a lot of science behind it and you've done a, a plenty of research. You've even researched uh, like a, a coated, a drug coated balloon. Talk about that. Yeah. So, you know, we, con we continuously finding ways of making people feel better in a minimally invasive way. I mean, that's my dream. That's why I do this job is that I want to take someone who's got a really severe life-threatening disease, yeah. be able to treat them often while they're awake and then send them home the same day or the next day. So part of the research we've been doing is in stents with drugs on it. Now we're doing some research with balloons in drugs with drugs on it. But really where the most exciting part is, you know, we've been doing stents for many years, is now we're able to repair or change people's heart valves without open heart surgery. And that's really been the part that we've, you know, of my program that's the most exciting and that we've been really trying to bring to the Bronx. Yeah, and sometimes you can't even tell that they had a procedure done. But in the past, they had to open up the, the chest cavity and get into the heart that way, I guess, right? Yeah, so imagine this, right? I have patients who come into me who are in their 80s, okay, who have an, a tight valve, the aortic valve, which is the main valve allowing blood to come out of your heart. And this valve is now tight with calcium because we've all been using this valve from, from the day we were born. It opens yeah. and closes every, with every heartbeat. And now it's completely narrowed, not allowing blood to come out. So in the old no. days, go ahead, sorry, Bob. Go, go ahead, get in the old days, go ahead. In the old days, it, what you need to do is you need to have a, a major surgery, open heart surgery, where they open your chest, put you in a heart lung machine, stop your heart, cut out the old valve and put a new valve in. Yeah. Okay? Nowadays, you'd come to me and my team. Okay. We bring you in on the morning of the procedure. And while you're awake with some sedation, we'd go through your groin, through the artery in your groin and put a brand new valve in the old valve and send you home the next day. Wow. Right. I, Which is I love what I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, a lot of people are, are dealing with it. What constitutes the tightness? Uh, is there a number associated with that? Yeah. So usually what happens is with age, we use up these valves, calcium uh, deposits on it. And so the valve stops opening and the heart has to fight harder to push blood out. And so you know, usually there's no pressure gradient across the valve. And when these people get sick, 
there's a lot of pressure. So it's almost like, I think you said it earlier, you know, it's almost like taking a hose pipe and sticking your finger on the hose pipe and suddenly, you know, you're stopping the water from coming out. And yeah. I take away that blockage. Yeah. And if you don't get it treated, does this create aneurysms and things of that nature? Well, if you don't get, you know, valve disease treated, it results in heart failure. So your heart getting weaker, being admitted to hospital uh, because your heart's getting weaker and you get symptoms of heart failure, which is the predominant one. The worst one is shortness of breath, okay? Or your lungs filling up with water. So imagine the sensation of feeling like you're drowning, but you're sitting in an office uh, yeah. and eventually death. Yeah. So how, do, how can one tell that they need to come and see a doctor like you? So I think generally the main symptoms are people who are getting uh, symptoms during effort. So while they're walking around, they start noticing that they are becoming short of breath, they're becoming more tired, they're getting chest pain. Any of those symptoms associated with trying to do activity generally means you need to come see a cardiologist to make sure you don't have either narrowings of your arteries or a valve problem. How has COVID affected the patients with pre-existing pre-existing heart problems yeah it's been pretty tough um particularly last year you know so many patients were terrified of coming into hospitals and rightly so i mean we went through a pretty tough spring last year in the bronx um, and, and so a lot of patients stayed away and when we got over that first wave and patients started coming better we we saw we lost quite a few patients because yeah. patients remember we have heart disease and get covid don't do very well right? That's, having heart disease is one of the really bad prognostic factors. But we also saw a lot of people become so much sicker because of COVID. So, you know, one of the really important messages I'm hoping the two of us can give to our community is the fact that if you have heart disease, don't delay coming into the hospital, come to the doctor. We really are in a safer environment now in Monty. We can help you with your heart disease. The worst thing to do is to ignore those symptoms because of COVID and you're scared of COVID and not to have them addressed. Yeah, and this is American Heart Month. Do you have any uh, tips for people during these uncertain times? Absolutely. COVID's made us all uh, a little bit lazier. We all stay at home a little bit more. Uh, and so I always want to remind uh, the viewers out there, you know, there's, there's some really important basic things we can do to stay healthy. So diet, make sure you know, look at what you're eating, try and stay away from all those fast foods and, and soft drinks. Uh, try and do some exercise. Everybody's scared of being outside and, and being around people, but there's little exercises you can do at home as well to keep yeah. yourself active, okay? And obviously stay away from bad things like you know smoking and drinking too much alcohol. Yeah. Do you think uh, the COVID disease, this pandemic has stimulated or, or has exacerbated a lot of the problems with the heart? and the circulatory system? Thanks, thanks for the question, Bob. COVID-19 has definitely exacerbated heart disease in a number of different ways. I think there's the direct effect of COVID, right? In the fact that causes lung disease and pulmonary disease. And so if you have cardiac disease, it's worse. We also yeah. know that one of the side effects of COVID has been blood clots forming in the, in the veins that, that go to your lungs <clears throat> and that can affect it. And then there's all the indirect consequences of COVID as well. You know, the fact that people are staying home, they're not exercising as much, um, they may be eating a little bit more fast food, they stressed a lot more, okay, people, many people have lost their jobs, and what do we do when we stress, you know, we kind of, we stay at home, we eat too much, we smoke, we have maybe a little bit too much alcohol, and yeah. then the last part is they've been avoiding going to see their doctor out of fears as well of coming to hospitals, so yeah. I think don't let COVID you know, don't let, don't let COVID make your heart disease worse and don't be a victim of all these indirect consequences. Yeah. Do you advise people to go get inoculated? Absolutely. Get your vaccine, uh, particularly if you have heart disease. The vaccines are safe. Uh, this pandemic uh, into our you know, new normal will be for most of us to get vaccinated. What do you tell people who have the fears of getting uh, vaccinated? Um, whether it's uh, something in, in, in the history of... Uh, people of color or, or people not wanting to trust uh, inoculations. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, there's been a lot of concern and distrust about vaccines in the past um, and maybe about this vaccine because of the rapidity that it's come out with. But I think we've seen already in countries that have vaccinated a large amount of the population, 
how they're doing better. And so we have a great example, for example, in Israel, you know, where they've already vaccinated over 60% of their population. And the number of deaths and hospitalizations from COVID have decreased dramatically. So I think there's enough scientific evidence out there that this vaccine is safe. We're doing it, all of us, you know, as doctors who are on the front line are getting vaccinated. We really believe that this is the way for us to get through this pandemic. Dr. Wig, your wealth of information, where can we find you to get uh, more information about what you're doing? Thank you. Uh, I'm, 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 at, I'm at Monty, so I'm at both the Weiler campus on East Chester Road, as well as the, the Moses campus um, on Gunhill Road. Uh, I also see patients at the Hutch. Um, you can find me at any of these, and we have a generic email address if you want to get hold of us or ask questions. And that email address is structuralheart at montefiore.org. There you go. Dr. Azim Latib, Director of uh, Interventional Cardiology and Structural Heart Interventions. Thank you so much, sir. You're, you're a blessing. We appreciate you and love you. Stay safe and God bless you. Thank you, Bob. It's a real pleasure to be here. I appreciate yes. it. You got Stay it. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Thanks. All right, we'll take a break right here. Coming up next, we've got a whole lot more next on Open.